I have to make I have to make one important announcement. Chat is open, but please do not send out unsolicited links or contact information to individual participants. Throughout the presentation, we will ask you to keep your microphones muted. <clears throat> please be aware that this presentation will be recorded and possibly shared online. You may turn off your camera, camera if you do not wish to appear in the video. Also, be aware that your name as shown in the participant screen could appear in the video, so please rename yourself now if you wish. Okay. Uh, if you have uh, questions during the presentation, please enter them in uh, the meeting chat area so the presenters can see, uh, can answer them later. Okay. I have to quickly stop share and reshare because it's jumped ahead again. Okay. So give me just a moment. Okay. Very frustrating. Okay. Hey, thank you for joining us today at JAUT International 2021. Please welcome uh, presenters uh, who will be presenting on, okay. Uh, the impact of ERT on part-time teachers' well-being. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, please start now. Thank you very much, Hiriko. Thank you very much for that introduction. Welcome, wherever you may be in Japan. Welcome to our presentation. Uh, we're very excited to be here. Um, as Rico has said. Um, <clears throat> our presentation has to do with the impact of ERT on part-time teachers' well-being. Uh, we are uh, Chiy uh, Wendy Goff, Bill Snyder, Chiyuki Yanese, and myself, Colin Skeets. Uh, to begin with, I think let's just jump right into it. Next, please. Okay, so here is an overview of our presentation and discussion today. We are going to begin explaining about the weekly survey that we conducted throughout the 2020 academic year, and then case studies that resulted from the initial semester survey. We will then discuss the results of the interviews from the case studies implications for um, the future, <laughs> I guess, and finally a discussion of some of the issues that arose. Okay, next slide, please. Uh oh, it's not moving. Okay. Maybe Very you should click on it. Uh, let me try that. Yep, okay, yep. there we go. Okay, so the initial survey was carried out in May 2020, and we had 95 respondents. Um, we're, what we're going to report here, the initial survey was quite larger, but we're going to focus on material from the International Positive and Negative Affect short form by PANAS SF, and to an open-ended question asking about people's experiences. And we use the IPANAS SF and the open-ended question throughout weekly surveys through the spring term, which 20 to 40 people responded to on a regular basis. And we continued it into the fall semester with 10 to 15 people continuing to respond until we ended the surveys in March this year. So out of the initial survey, three major themes emerged. And these were vulnerability, solidarity, and professional development. I'm gonna talk a little bit about each of these in turn and there's a sample quote from our data with each of these topics. So vulnerability refers to the fact that people can suffer harm in some way. Um, and for the part-time teachers, the circumstances of ERT um, produce this, this effect of vulnerability in three major ways. First was they had a sense of not being supported, right? Um, and in particular, they were concerned about job security, keeping their jobs, having contracts continued, and financial security. Um, 
ERT was expensive and expenses weren't necessarily being covered. And finally, there was a threat to professional identity. Um, people worried that they couldn't teach as well teaching online. At the same time, at the very beginnings of ERT, we also saw solidarity arising among teachers coming together and supporting each other, helping each other to get through this experience. And we'll talk about this in more detail um, later on. But also one thing that, that came through really clearly was that teachers really felt solidarity with students. And they were really concerned that students um, be able to access classrooms and be able to learn during ERT. And finally, um, it became really clear to a lot of teachers that this was going to change their teaching um, and that they felt a need for professional development in many cases. At the same time, other teachers who were, who were already more experienced with teaching online, this became an opportunity for them to provide professional development for teachers. And there was a, a rise of a lot of informal professional development for teachers at the start of ERT. And now I will turn things over to Wendy to talk about how we moved from the weekly surveys to the case studies. Okay, so at the end of the spring semester, Chiyuki and I gathered the data from all of the weekly surveys, especially the data from the open-ended questions at the end of each week's survey. And we started analyzing it to look for themes that ran throughout the um, responses from the participants. And we found four, four themes that really kind of came up a lot. Um, workload issues, health issues, administrative issues from their universities, and also stress management. And so from that, from those four major themes, Chiki and I found six participants who really wrote a lot about these four issues throughout the entire semester. And we decided to move this into a case study and ask them to do interviews so they could elaborate more on how they felt about these issues and how they dealt with these issues. And we, we found three female and three male teachers who were all experienced in uh, teaching at the university level who agreed to participate in these interviews. And so now Chiki is going to discuss a little bit more about the case studies. Hi. Hi, everyone. I guess Tete wants to talk about some feelings as well. <laughs> Yay. Well, anyway, and so I'm going to talk about the case studies. Please take a look at this quote. So as this quote shows, the teachers who participated in this case study prioritized students' well-being and the quality of their teaching despite their challenging working conditions because due to the pandemic. I call the, all the participants part-time teachers. However, the bachelor notes, there are various types of part-time teachers. The first one is aspiring academics who are looking for full-time position. Next one is career enders who have reached and another group of part-timers who work to separate, uh, no, sorry, and reached age, determined age, and are limited to part-time work. And another researcher claim um, different group, which was who worked to supplement the family income and their aspirations. Then also the bachelor identifies the last group of uh, somebody called freelancers who prefer to work only part-time because they teach at universities while avoiding and administrative responsibilities that come with full-time positions. So the participants in this study might fall in the last category, freelancer or full-time part-timer. Okay. They volunteered 
to take one hour interview in September 2020. Uh, we asked about how their working conditions changed before and during the ELT, especially their workload, stress management strategies, health conditions, and what kind of admin support they had. So they were under extreme stress, yet they were very generous with time and shared very private sentiments, much more than Wendy and I expected. We are so thankful and admire their generosity, concerns, professionalism towards education and perseverance under challenging conditions. Okay, next one, we're gonna share the, um, the one of the issue they um, mentioned. So the first issue uh, they talked about was excessive workload. Of course, before ELT, it was about one hour of a preparation time per class. But during ELT, it was five to six times more than the usual, depending on the teacher. You need to prepare worksheets and tutorial videos, PDFs for textbooks and written instructions in some cases. On top of that, they had to deal with excessive numbers of emails from students or admins telling us changes in teaching uh, contents and grading systems sometimes. The majority of part-time teachers also need to learn a few learning managing systems and the video conferencing services since they work at the several universities. Okay, next one, Wendy will talk about other issues. Okay, the first theme I'm going to talk about is the health issues. So it seemed like the teachers that we talked to, the participants, some of them mentioned about kind of ongoing health issues, things that they were experiencing pre-pandemic that became a little bit worse. Things like um, just kind of general ailments like back problems or things like that that became worse as a result of sitting so much or um, spending so much time in front of the computer. Other, other newer issues that the participants mentioned were eye strain, dry eyes and headaches that they felt resulted from the excessive amount of time that they spent on their computers or um, headaches, especially related to the stress and other things that were arising as from the situation. And finally, also sleep issues were a big thing that the participants mentioned. So it seemed like health issues were kind of a combination of previous issues that were getting a little bit worse and new things that were coming up. Okay, next slide, please. So then the next, the next issue I'm going to talk about is stress management. So I think the participants had a variety of different types of coping issues that are coping methods that they used for stress management. A lot of it seemed related to getting out of the house because they were suddenly spending so much time inside and in some cases spending so much time inside with other family members who were also suddenly stuck at home due to the pandemic. So they mentioned things like spending more time walking their dogs or spending more time just going out and taking long walks during the daytime. Um, gardening, other types of kind of activities that just took their minds off of the stress that they were going through professionally. And a lot of these were probably activities that the participants were doing before, but they seemed to put more emphasis on making time in their day to do these activities or putting emphasis on spending more time doing these activities than they would have um, before the pandemic. 
And I think this is directly related to the need for some kind of release from dealing with all of these other issues that were coming up. And I think it also helped them cope with their health issues that were arising due to the stress of the extra workload and the administrative problems and other things related in general to the pandemic. All right, next slide, please. So I'm gonna talk about the suggestions for the admin support from the part-time teachers. Okay, so as actually the quote says, um, we have but they, the part-time teachers got the um, no research grants so that at the beginning of BLT, um, there was no uh, financial support, but um, they need to buy some equipment such as earphones, microphones, and in some cases, the computer. So it would be really um, nice to have the little bit of a financial support. And the second suggestion would be um, the amount of unnecessary emails written in very formal business-like Japanese, which was even for me, I'm a native Japanese speaker, but even for me, it was a little bit difficult, ambiguous. So um, sometimes because of the junk emails, um, we missed the very important informative emails. So a lot of teachers mentioned that it was time consuming and stressful to deal with a massive amount of emails daily. So that would be a good suggestion. And the third suggestion might be an uh, inconsistency of instructions and the rules mm -hmm. of the admin. Um, some universities change the teaching content and grading criteria that would be uh, the teachers show understanding and then cope with the changes due to the circumstances. However, some expressed their frustrations and then disappointments due to the lack of emergency management skills at work. So this might be a good suggestion. And also um, some teachers um, express about the um, technological problems. And at the beginning of the ELT, LMS crashed due to too many access at the same time. So those are suggestions. Okay, next, please. Okay, the next portion of our presentation is going to be uh, implications for faculty development. So things that the universities can do to help part-time teachers and to provide part-time teachers with training or other types of support through the institution in faculty development programs and also professional development that the teachers can do on their own or through their network of teacher friends and colleagues. And Colin is going to discuss about the FD and PD implications. Thank you very much, Wendy. Okay, so out of the four uh, themes that um, came from the case study, um, three of them we, we see as having direct um, direct input into um, how faculty development and professional development should be uh, um, implemented. Um, the first one has to do with excessive workload. As, uh, as um, Chiyuki said, excessive workload, teachers were working a lot more during ERT. So as a result, um, it's, it's interesting that ERT actually is pushing us towards making better use of faculty development. This is one of the good things about ERT, if you want to say, or the silver linings. The first being flexible, that the delivery of any faculty development program need to be flexible insofar as either modular, on-demand, uh, face-to-face, -face, whatever the, the faculty development program is, it should be, um, there should be choices for the part-time teacher. The reason why we say this is because they're under a lot of stress and they're not necessarily able to be at a meeting at a certain time. So flexibility is key moving forward. 
even without ERT. Providing your, your part-time teachers with uh, a, a more flexible timetable probably will mean an uptake in the messages that your the faculty is trying to communicate to its part-time staff. Minimalist, in other words, if your meeting is originally an hour, why not take it down to like 15 minutes, 20 minutes? Give your part-time teachers what they need to know and only what they need to know. Um, long speeches, they're not gonna help your, your part-time teachers do their job. And make sure that the faculty development program is based on needs. What exactly is it that they need? Most universities don't knew, know what the, part, the needs of part-time teachers are. Hence the reason why we, one of the reasons why we did this study in the first place. It is crucial that any faculty development program that a university initiates be based on something that indicates a need for it. Maybe common sense, but these are, these are we believe, practical implications that just about any university can implement. And it doesn't really cost any money. That's the other thing. Next slide, please. The next has to do with uh, stress management. Teachers were uh, extremely stressed during ERT. I think all of us were. Um, but one of the things, one of the ways to manage stress is through community development, community bu building, I should say, professional community building. Um, why do we need this? Well, one, new approaches to a common problem. A lot of us had problems with getting online. If we had uh, input from other part-time teachers and full-time teachers as to what their best practices were, I think it would have made the stress level come down a bit. And that would have been very useful. Moving forward, even post ERT, this is something that faculty development programs and professional development programs should be thinking about. The other reason for why uh, community building is needed is mutual understanding of what is normal. <laughs> um, as we navigate ERT, all of us are coming to a new normal of what is what we need to understand. Um, is involved in online teaching. So uh, this is something else that another reason for why we need um, some sort of community building activity built into any professional development program. Again, this doesn't cost any money. This is just purely structural management of the implementation of faculty development. Next slide, please. And last one that we see is administrative uh, support. Again, this is not a money expenditure, but it is um, very important. This is probably the most important. Um, one thing that ERT highlighted, highlighted was that in some time, it, sometimes, in some instances, the administrative um, arm of the universities were in the way. They actually hindered teachers doing their job. And this came out again and again in our data. Uh, whether it was a weekly survey, the initial survey, the case studies, just talking with teachers. The administration needs some sort of training on what is the job of, of, of part-time teachers, part-time English language teachers, and how what they are doing hinders teachers doing that job. Uh, another thing that we see needing is a, a way for teachers to communicate with the universities. I find it very ironic that um, my universities are asking me to set up communication channels with my students. But uh, when it comes to finding out information from um, the university as to how to do something, that communication channel seems to disappear. So again, this is these are recommendations that are, um, they don't cost any money. They're just purely structural. Um, one thing, Uslu, I believe, 2008, one thing that she did say was, the less technical support the teachers have, the less technology they use in their classroom. 
Enduring ERT technology is crucial to a successful language learning. So getting back to the focus on language learning, we want to focus now on, well, we're going to move on to the discussion section, actually. So how should we move forward? Next slide, please. We're going to have four different rooms. Is this correct? All right. And uh, each of us are going to take one of the rooms. So room number one, stress management. Who will be taking stress management? Okay, so I, yes, I, I will um, be in room number one discussing about stress management. I, I'd like to highlight that these discussion rooms, we would like to focus on positive things, what people are doing to resolve these issues that um, are the topics of the discussion rooms. We don't want this to turn into just like a bitch session about our workplaces or our colleagues or other things like that. That's room one. Room two, uh, so room one, sorry, can we go back to room one, Bill? Sorry. Room one will be on, one more. No, no, uh, you oh. are in the room two, Corin. Room two, thank you. Yes. Okay, so, so room, room one two. is, yeah, room one is Wendy and room okay. two is you. Yeah, and I'll be looking at uh, continuing professional development. And the question I'll be looking at is, what suggestions would you make to uh, for professional development and faculty development at your workplaces? Sorry, next. And then I'm, I will be the facilitator of the room three so about the domain support. What can you suggest or what, what did you get and what was good? Or how we can uh, get more advice or guidance from the uh, admin or the full-timers. The next one, Bill, you you are muted. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I will be in room four, um, which will be sort of the um, other topics room. So anything that's not covered by the first three rooms that people want to talk about in relation to ERT, um, I'll be in the fourth room to facilitate that discussion. And I'm going to set up the breakout rooms now. So we've got four rooms. Um, and I believe you should be able to join the room that you want to join. There's no, there's no assignment to the rooms. So I'm going to join room four. I'm going to join the room three. Okay. I will... Bill, before you go in, make sure that everybody else can get in there. If there's yeah, anybody who doesn't true. have the correct Zoom, you're going to have to manually put them in. Right. Um, it looks like I'm going to have to. So, so you'll have to um, open the rooms. <laughs> uh, you have to open the room. Yeah. Okay. okay. And it, if you want to stop sharing, then we can all. Yep. People should be able to join the rooms. So. Room one, two, three, four, everyone, mm -hmm. please join. There's then no room. We can... Everybody is saying there's no room. Andy, yeah. uh, I'm no in the same yet. boat. You can't see no. okay, Daniel saying the same. Yep, I can see that. I've I've got the rooms here in front of me. I can assign people oh. and I can join, I can I, join I, any I, room. Have you pressed open rooms at the end after a sign? Yep, yep, I did. And now I have close all rooms in front of me. Do you have, uh, did you have it um, let participants decide? There's um, three options. Yeah, it's not giving me those options. Really? Nope. Um, okay, close all rooms, uh, Hold on, I've, I have. I've got let participants decide here. Okay, so okay. Um, I think Wendy, I think do you Wendy's want to open up the, room, the rooms? rooms? Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay, how about now? Can you go into the room? Yep. Yeah, so it's done. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Right. So I am room two. Continuing. Do one. Do one. Do one. Stress. Um, uh oh. So room two, what we had was um, I'm not in Zoom right now. I'm looking at the my, my Google Doc so I can um, refer to it. Um, regarding the actual answer to the question, um, I think perhaps that. One of the, the participants, what, what, what the participant said was, 
Um, don't forget the skills that we learned in ERT. We need to keep those skills um, sharp. And so it was really important, for example, the example that this participant gave was um, Flipgrid in the face-to-face -face presentation class. It's still needed. Don't forget that students still need to do the practice, for example, before they do an actual live presentation. So Flipgrid, using the technology that we gained, we need to make sure that we continue to, to uh, keep those skills um, sharp whether that's professional development, teachers working with other teachers, or something that is administered by the university, that's something for people to decide for themselves. Um, one other participant said that, and it was really interesting because this came actually from our data as well, that the tech help that this participant received from outside the university, from OTJ, which is another, it's a face, Facebook group here in Japan, was far superior to what she was receiving from the university itself. Mm -hmm. And uh, that that was something else that, that um, professional development seems to trump faculty development when it comes to specific skills that we need in the classroom. The last, mm -hmm. last sort of section that we got into was um, things like, well, what did full-timers do? Uh, and I thought this was really interesting. Um, it, 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 if we could go back and do this study again, one of the things that I would like to do, would have liked to have had was an ongoing study where we could chart what the full timers were doing. Because there were some really interesting things. For example, um, one participant talked about um, how the full timer created a, a Zoom videos on how to how to do a breakout room, how to like just short information videos that were then made available to the part-time staff, how to use the LMS. Um, another one, another thing that I, I found interesting was um, becoming comfortable with the technology. The, one participant, what, what this participant said was getting comfortable by um, becoming familiar with the technology with friends. And that's kind of interesting because I did the exact same thing. It just so happened that my friends were all full timers and I was very lucky in that way. But that was a, a skill that, again, it showed that professional development, teacher to teacher, was kind of important here. Um, what else? Um, one thing that was stated and it was came up in our data as well, um, administration bottlenecks. Um, for example, administrators at one university had a problem with um, providing professional development to part-time teachers uh, due to email addresses. <laughs> this has nothing, I mean, should, should part-timers have email addresses? During a friggin' ERT? Uh, I mean, like, this is just, it, this sort of, of hindrance, this, this, this institutional structure hindering part-time teachers from doing their job. Mm -hmm. So that's all that we talked about. We had a good session, actually. It was good. Thank you very much for those who came to the room. OK, I'll skip ahead. So I know Chiyuki moved around among different rooms. And so I'll skip ahead. Room four, it was just, it was just Julie and I. Um, and Julie raised a couple of, of points we, we sort of talked about different things in our experiences of, of ERT, but Julie raised a couple of points that I thought were interesting and we hadn't talked about, which was, um, how did people deal with assessment? And in particular, how did you deal with the question of participation as part of assessment? Um, if students were coming to class and everyone was turning off their camera, how did you judge whether people were, were effectively participating? Um, which I think is a really good question. And, and I think as we open this up in our last few minutes to open discussion, I'd really like to hear from people. How did you, how did you evaluate student participation? Um, and then towards the end, we also started to talk about the switch. Now that we're switching over from ERT back to face-to-face -face and occasionally to hybrid classes, how are people dealing with the, the switching back? 
Um, so actually, I'll leave those two questions open. How, how did people deal with participation issues and evaluation? And how are people dealing with the switch? We've got about seven minutes left for discussion, so I'd really like to hear from people. Before we do that, though, Bill, do you want to just go to the next slide? Mm -hmm. So we should make people aware that uh, we are actually in the process of writing a, a book or uh, producing a book, I should say. Um, the book will include a summary of all of our data, the initial data, the weekly data from semester one and two, also the interviews, of course. Um, the book will also include, very fortunately, um, four part-time teachers who were in the study. Each of them have agreed to write a, a narrative. So that should be really interesting reading. For those of you that are into narrative inquiry, uh, not narrative inquiry, but narrative research, research involving narrative, I think you'll find this book very interesting. The name of the book, The Year of Emergency Remote Teaching from the Perspective of Part-Time University English Language Educators in Japan will be hopefully coming, uh, I think the due date is early 2022. It's in the process of being written as we speak. Sorry, and hopefully, and hopefully the title will be shorter. <laughs> yeah. All right. um, so go ahead, Bill. Yeah. So let's just go back to those questions. How are, I, I think the big one, how are people dealing with switching over now that my university is going back to face to face in two days? We got, we got the announcement at the end of last week. So wow. how's everybody doing with switching back? Hating it. I can I can say something real quick if you don't mind. Um, we've been in the classroom off and on since last year autumn. So the university here, the university president decided that um, being in the classroom was preferable. And then as the numbers went up, we'd take like four weeks where we'd have to be online. And um, it's been the really rough part is the university makes the decision week to week on Friday. So Friday afternoon, you get an email telling you what next week's alert level is going to be. So that's been really <laughs> rough. But um, what I've found is that um, I, I would just, I did a questionnaire with the students at the beginning of the semester asking, how worried are you about infection risk? Do you want to do face to face interaction in the classroom? Or would you prefer to do interaction through the Moodle? And so out of the eight classes I'm teaching, six of them are basically as if we were online anyway. And that was the students' preferences. Mm -hmm. And then two of them were doing face-to-face -face interaction in the classroom because that's what the students in the classroom wanted. And I have told students that hybrid is an option. Like if there's say six or eight students who really want to do face-to-face -face interaction, I'm happy to have them do that. But when it comes time for them to like raise their hands and actually do the face-to-face -face interaction, I've only had a maximum of two people raise their hands. And I've been like, it's going to be a long hour if the two of you have to talk to each other. So I, so we've just <laughs> done, it's just been online is basically the way it's gone. I could say more, but I think I'll stop there. Yeah. My, my experience with my students was very similar to that. Very similar. I had one student who said, I want to be face to face, but it feels so much safer to be online. Yeah, I mean, I think I would respond by saying there's a little bit of education that can be done as well. Like my students seem to have this opinion that communication means talking to each other. But the reality is, for example, like Chiyuki and I very rarely have a conversation where we're actually talking to each other. Most of our interaction is through Facebook, through texts, like following up on one another's lives kinds of things. So that's one of the things I try to do with my students is to say, like, look, I talk to people all the time without talking to them with my mouth. Like there's communication is not just speaking to one another. That seems to be a message that they don't necessarily kind of already understand intuitively. Sorry, Stacy has her hand up. I'll stop. Yep, yep, Stacy. Yep. Oh, yes, really quickly. Um, uh, it, during the second quarter, so at Saitama University in um, uh, in in June to uh, no, sorry, the first quarter, April to uh, June, we 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 had to teach in person, and um, what was very helpful during the pandemic um, near Tokyo, uh, what was very helpful because of the social distancing using. Zoom for communication so that the students could um, 
still see each other's notes, not use the audio. They'd speak in person, but computer to computer was very helpful for that. And it, 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 it fostered um, looking at, they were able to look at vocabulary and there was a, so that Zoom could be a tool even in the classroom. Yeah, and, and maybe uh, try not, like if you have earphones, um, the earbuds, if, if they fall out in the classroom, it's kind of hard. So maybe a headset that's really secure. <laughs> Those are the two things that seem to help. Mm -hmm. okay. Julie Thank has you your so hand up, Bill. Julie, okay. So I can only see five people because I've got the screen share on. So Julie, yes. Bill, you can stop the screen Sorry. share. Sorry, um, can, okay, All right. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was curious to see like how, uh, are people really um, maintaining social distancing in the classroom? I mean, I just find it impossible. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm kind of worried, like some students are going to start complaining that, you know, I'm not keeping far enough or other students aren't, you know, like, because, because they, you know, to, un to hear each other, right, we have masks on and, mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I, I haven't really been following those, you know, there's signs up all over the place, but um, so far nobody's gotten sick that I know of, but. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the other thing. I mean, it's, it's interesting. Um, I, I think many universities have not been very um, upfront with teachers about which students, you know, do you have a student in your class who had COVID and that sort of stuff? But also, I mean, this this idea of if the lessons don't go well, who is to blame? And it's going to be the teacher. Mm. And most of the teachers are part time teachers. These people are are not. I mean, I'm I'm now a part timer. I say these people. I am among those people now. <laughs> I've gone back to, to being part time, and it. I gotta say, it's hard. It's really hard to juggle all of these different balls and continue to put a quality classroom out there, to put a, a quality lesson together. So I hear you. Oh. What I notice is some of the classrooms I teach in, they, the students are sitting at tables and there are dividers and about half of the students sit at the tables with dividers. But when they need to do pair work or something, they just turn around and talk to the person behind them. So the dividers are useless. And I really don't know how to get around that. Um, yeah, dividers are useless. And then I, I guess it's everybody knows, but it's quite a Japanese idea, I think. It's just, it's, it's, sorry, it's, but it's, it's there. It's, so it's we tried. Theater. Yeah. yeah. I am also having difficulty getting some of the students to come back to school on the days when we're in the classroom because almost every one of my classes, there's at least one student who has an exemption to stay on Zoom. And so, you know, I, the students know that because they talk amongst each other. So I'll just get these messages in the morning like, can I join on Zoom today? It's my only class. Or you know, oh, I woke up late. Is it okay to join on Zoom today? And because they know I'll have it going anyway. And yeah. I don't necessarily mind that, but it makes it difficult to communicate with the students who are in the classroom, you know? Um, well, so th th this is one of the things that I, I, I heard on ETJ, uh, sorry, on OTJ. And it was really useful. If you are in a situation where you are teaching both face-to-face -face and online hybrid, gear your class as if it was completely online. Oh, I do, I do. And luckily I mainly teach reading and writing classes. So that makes it easier than I think for a speaking class. Yeah. But it's kind of frustrating that students are choosing not to come to the classroom. And that's, is that something that other people are seeing as well? Is there a resistance elsewhere in Japan where students don't want to come back to the classroom? Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. Me too. So, so Luis, you're muted. Luis, 
<laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I gave students a choice to vote because for the classes that we were able to go back for, which were determined by the university, uh, they meet twice a week. So we have a choice of going back 50-50 uh, or going back fully, fully to face-to-face. -to -face. And uh, overwhelmingly, they chose 50-50 and some said they want to stay online. And there was a really small percentage who said they want to come like three students in about 46, that's two classes. So, you know, and all of those students were in one of the classes. The other class had zero students who wanted to go back, you know, face-to-face. Yeah. -face. So uh, they got Same used here. to it. Mm -hmm. And they uh -huh. they just got familiar with all those technologies. And why now? They yeah. Know. I, but Ivan, that, you had, mm. Ivan, you had your hand up. Did you want to say something? Oh. Who? Ivan, Ivan had his Ivan. hand up, but it looks like he's... There he is. Ivan. <laughs> <laughs> Real bad timing. Uh, okay, I think, I think my internet connection is stable again. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so uh, I teach at the house here part time, and, and they, they have these uh, partitions, and, and, and they, they go, uh, they basically have only one side, so the student kind of goes in and, and stays there, right? They, they're transparent plastic um, partitions, right? So, but then, but then uh, you get the students um, up, and you do pair work, and then, you know, um, that's one. At my uh, at the place where I'm tenured, we don't have any choice. We have to teach hybrid. So I've been, I've been doing that uh, in the past one year and a half. Um, so, so, you know, you look at a camera, you make, you make sure that, um, the students uh, at home are given some, um, some attention, but then, then you have the students in the classroom. Um, how do you point the camera? So it's, 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 it's quite, uh, troublesome. Um, but yeah, I, I taught uh, fully online only one semester at the very beginning. Thanks for the time. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, for me, I think this is something that universities have to be aware of. There's going to be a, a certain segment of the population that are dying to get back into the classroom. And then there's a certain segment of the student population that don't want to get anywhere near the, the, the classroom. Mm -hmm. How the, and, and all of this, of course, will fall on to the teacher in the classroom. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I think this is something that universities need to be aware of and how they respond to it is going to be really <laughs> fun. Anyways, it is, I think we're past our time. Um, yep. So to, uh, if, if it's okay, I'd like to um, conclude by saying, thank you very much for coming. We really appreciate your thoughts, your ideas, wherever you are in Japan, I hope you're safe and um, get outside and enjoy the day if you have the chance. Here in Yokohama, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. So all the best. And thank you very much for coming to our presentation. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, nice work. Yep. Excellent. Yeah. Take care. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. That was lovely, guys. Lovely, Stacy. Yeah, thank you. For I'll coming, join you. Okay. Take care, everybody. Yeah. Looking forward to your book. Yay! Yay! Yay. Yes. Yay. I'm gonna get it. <laughs> thank you, Julie. Thanks. Thank you, Julie. Congratulations in advance. Thanks for coming, Andy. No worries, Colin's gets. <laughs>